All right, good to see you guys. Glad to be here again. Always a great crowd and good to see so many people excited about achieving great health, because why not not get cancer, right? You don't want to have happen to you what happens to other Americans and live to be you know, in your later years and have your golden years be the worst years of your life where you are suffering, can't think straight, uncomfortable, and have one medical tragedy after another befall you. So we have a unique opportunity in human history. This unique opportunity means that nutritional science has made such dramatic advances that we can apply this sci these scientific principles into our lives and not have heart attacks, not have strokes, not get dementia, or have that happen, and prevent and not get cancer either. Whoa. Maybe that was too many beans I had for lunch. No, I think I have to be in the middle of the room. If I move, there's one, ah. there's, one, there's one spot on the stage that probably works. I've got to find that spot. I think this is it. Probably away from the speakers, right? I think I'm good. All right, as long as I don't move. No, I, I prefer, I'm, I'm good. But I think it was because I was too Let me try it again. If I, I'll use it if I have to, but I, if I stay away from those speakers. Okay, so the point is, is that the same parameters, the same dietary portfolio that prevents cancer works best at preventing death from cancer and reversing cancer or preventing recurrence of cancer when you have cancer. The same thing is true with heart disease or with any disease. There's not one diet that's right to prevent heart disease, and another diet you follow when you have heart disease, that's not even realistic or logical. It's the same program that is most effective at protecting you against dementia and cancer that we follow even if you waited too long and you found out you have cancer. So that's what this presentation is about. It's giving people the information they need to know so they don't have to get cancer, but if they have an early stage cancer, a precancerous condition, or an advanced cancer, they still understand the principles they have to apply to extend their life and live longer. Okay, is that clear? So let's get started. First of all, I consider cancer the largest threat to a person's lifespan. Even though heart disease kills 75% of people over the age of 75, or over the age of 70, it's probably the most likely cause of death in the majority of people, among health-conscious people who are eating a relatively healthy diet, heart disease is, is easy to prevent. And cancer is a little harder to prevent because it takes years of eating healthfully to prevent cancer. So what I'm saying right now, for generally healthy people, cancer is the most thing we, we should focus on most intently so we live a long life without, that ha without having that have to happen to us. For example, if you smoke cigarettes, and if you smoke three packs a day for 10 years, that gives you a risk of 30 pack years. If you smoke two packs a day for 40 years, that's 80 pack years. In other words, the risk is related to the number of years you ate unhealthfully times the, the, how bad you ate unhealthfully or how many cigarettes you smoked. The same thing is true with salt years. It's how much salt you had for how many years you incurred that risk of the high salt diet, and that determines your risk of having a hemorrhagic stroke or, or, other, um, or heart attacks from damage from high salt intake. It's the same thing. However, the more years that go by when you're off the cigarettes, the more years that go by when you're off the salt, the more years that go by when you're off the processed foods, the white rice, and the, you know, the meats and the cheeses and the bacon, and whatever, the years that go by that you're off it, every year you're off those foods, your risk goes down. So that, for example, if you're five years out from smoking cigarettes, your risk of developing a smoking-related heart attack or a lung cancer would go down by almost 50% five years out of stop, have stop smoking. 15 years out of no longer smoking, if you only smoke, if you smoke less than two packs a day, 15 years out, your risk goes down almost to the point of a person who never smoked. 20 years out is necessary for a person who smoked more. The same thing is true with food. 
we want to start, we don't want to wait till a person gets lung cancer to stop smoking, right? We want to stop smoking earlier. We don't want to wait till you get a diagnosis of cancer, start eating a cancer preventative diet. You want to do it now and put your years in so your body has the chance to repair the damage slowly, fix the broken DNA crosslinks, remove the carcinogens. In other words, your body has the innate ability to repair itself if you supply it with the right materials. And that's what this lecture is about. It's about how to supply the body with the right materials to fight cancer because we know that we have a population that's been raised on processed foods and faked foods with high in carcinogens and they've been exposed to a lot of damage early in life. They've set, in the, set the stage for cancer when they're young. And so we can't, so we have to as soon as, as soon as we can institute a program that's not good, that's, that's excellent. It has to be nutritional excellence because only nutritional excellence can repair the damage that that first half of your life caused. It's not just good enough to cut back on cigarettes to five cigarettes a day. You're not gonna repair the damage. You have to get rid of the cigarettes completely. We have to get rid of those disease-causing factors completely if we expect our body to be cancer-proof.